advice for aspiring musicians and producers? Don't. <laughs> 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 Hi, my name is Jason Gaochen. I'm the founder and producer of Homegrown Studios. Hi, I'm MJ, composer, arranger, newest member and partner of Homegrown Studios. How I started the studio was that I had this idea with my previous partner to build this studio to record a band's album. And I did the the crazy thing of going to my mom and saying like, Mom, can I borrow like $10,000 to start a studio? And she flipped because it was like, it was a lot of money and she truly didn't believe in what I was doing at the time. I had no portfolio, I had no big acts out. After talking to my mom, after telling her how, how passionate I am, like how I really want to do this, she eventually cracked and she gave me that loan. I mean, not without its own IOUs and stuff like that. That was, I think, the first and only loan I took from my mom. But I really have to thank her, she really gave me that first shot. So some of the things that you might not know about starting a studio by yourself, no one cares <laughs> when you first start out. I mean, I did a lot of free work just to showcase and to build that portfolio and eventually like the word spread out like hey, I'm, Jason's doing good work at Homegrown Studios and that got to the year of uh, Joel, Gender Bones. And from then on, it he introduced me to Jasmine Soko and now we've been working together ever since and it's only built up from there. I like Jason's full-on music, music, very musical journey. I think I segued slightly with going to film school. I got the privilege to meet some of like crucial individuals from the film industry that was aware of like what we're trying to achieve here at Homegrown Studios and actually invested and uh, rested their faith in us to, to engage in projects and campaigns that includes like Puma, Lazada, Bridgestone. This isn't your typical 9 to 5 grind. Every day uh, and every given project, it's a different hurdle and a different struggle and a different triumph. Uh, at the same time, lah. some artists, we wake up to days where we we are approached by artists that requires us to dabble with like one genre of music and then it's like a 180 span from, from one genre to the other. I think uh, a lot of research is involved, uh, a lot of conversations is, uh, uh, would, would be involved with like our clients and our artists as well. So I think one of the biggest misconceptions we face uh, being in the music scene is from our parents saying like, hey, uh, I don't think you can make money off music. and I mean, the only way to counter that, and the way I countered my mom was one day. One day, I brought Jenna Bones to, to the house, and then she was like, "Oh my God, that's the kid from TV!" And then I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> and after that, uh, I mean, she's been super supportive. You know, like you just gotta work. You gotta put in the work, and it was like four years before I got to that point. Like four years of just slogging it out in studios, and. Yeah, you, you gotta have faith, you gotta put in the work to overcome that misconception, man. Because it is possible to do it in Singapore. You see all these artists and they're getting big, and it's like overnight. Like, I mean, one day, Gentle Bones exploded with Until We Die, and everyone was like, oh my god, I can be that too. But we all kind of forget that he was in a band before this, in Andrew Sane, where he was playing for years. It was only Until We Die that he got mainstream success, but he's been putting in the work way before. It's a marathon, not a sprint, okay? I'm going crazy